Hey, what is going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and today I will share with you guys more than 20 super useful iPhone tips and tricks that I believe every iPhone user must know. Now, if you're a long time subscriber on this channel and you have watched a lot of my videos, you probably know some of these, but we have some new ones that are really super, super useful and you will most likely find yourself using these on daily basis. Now, another thing that's super useful is the subscribe button underneath this video. That subscribe button helps out a lot because most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed to the channel. So please make sure to do so before you leave this video. And of course, smash the like button because it really helps out a lot and will help this video do much, much better. Now we're starting things off with the photos app. So when you go to the photos app, of course, you will have the search section right here. Did you know that you can actually search photos based on apps we've got them from? So if I search Safari right there, you can see saved from apps go right there. And here I have all the photos that I have downloaded from Safari into my device. As easy as that, I can go ahead and find photos from any app that I have saved on my device. When you're recording the screen of your iPhone, maybe you're doing like a tutorial or you just wanna tell someone something, you record the screen of your iPhone, you don't actually need to type anything. You 3D touch right there on the screen recording option on the control center and then make sure you have turned on the microphone. Now, when you start recording the screen, you can actually do a voiceover on that video. So you can record and maybe just talk here, tell something, something you want to point out on a video or something like that. You can actually do that at a voiceover to your screen recording. I know a lot of iPhone users use Google Maps. We have Apple Maps, but a lot of people think Google Maps is better and they will use it on their iPhone. So here's a really cool trick. So let's say you're somewhere, maybe you're traveling or something like that. You go to a city, you need the map of that city. But what if you don't have cellular connection with your device? What you can do is save the map of that city to just take a look at it offline. The way you do it, just go and search for the city. Once you have searched for the city, then go back to the search section and just search for OK Maps. Just type OK Maps and tap search and you will see the screen and this will allow you to actually download this into your device. So you can see it's now downloading the map of Paris in this case and I will be able to actually view the map of the city, the full map, even though my device might not be connected to the internet. Of course, we take a lot of screenshots on our devices and most of them we do to send it to someone. If you wanna just send someone a screenshot on iMessage, what you can do on the home screen or just anywhere on your device, take a screenshot. You don't need to save it and go to the Photos app. You just drag it from here and I can just put it right here on this conversation. And from here, just go ahead and send the screenshot without having to save it first to the Photos app and then go ahead and search it from here. Just take a screenshot, drag it from any app or from the home screen and just put it on any message you want. Now, when it comes to screenshots, you probably know that you can take a screenshot of a web page on iOS and turn it into a PDF file. So we will have the full sized web page turned into a PDF file. But what if you don't wanna have the complete page? Let's say you wanna have two or three pages from that screenshot. You can just tap right there. It will show you this interface, which now allows you to actually crop the screenshot of that web page. So in this case, you can see I can only save four pages right here. I don't wanna save the full screenshot. I can go ahead and crop it as easy as that. Unfortunately, on iOS, we don't have a feature on iMessage that would allow us to send a scheduled message at any time we want automatically without us having to actually do that manually. But fortunately enough, we can do that through automations. You can create that automation pretty easy. You go to, to the shortcuts app, go to, to the automation section and tap on create personal automation. Go to time of the day right here and pick the time when you want to send the message. Then tap on next here. You will have the suggestions. You can tap on send message or just tap on add action and search for send message. So let's just add that. And of course we can go ahead and choose right here the contact. So just tap here on recipient. Once you choose the contact, you can also tap on message right there and just enter any message you wanna send and then tap next. Once you have done that, make sure to disable this, tap on don't ask 
and then tap on done and you're good to go. This message will be sent automatically at the time that you have set. And this one right here will be very useful for a lot of people. You know that when the alarm goes off in the morning, you will have to tap on the screen of your iPhone on the stop button to actually stop the alarm or snooze it. But did you know that you can actually do that without having to touch the screen of your iPhone? All you have to do when an alarm goes off is just press any of the buttons on your device. Any of the volume buttons, volume up, volume down, doesn't matter, or the side button, and you will snooze the alarm as easy as that without having to actually reach for the screen and find the snooze button. Through all this time, we have moved the apps on the home screen on a way that's not actually that practical. So just place the icon right there on the corner of the screen. That's kind of hard to do. What you can do actually is just take the icon, hold it with a finger like this, and with the other finger, you can just move the pages around and then just release the icon as easy as that. That's the proper way to move icons on the home screen of your iPhone. Now, when it comes to moving stuff on the screen of your iPhone, widgets are the next thing that you can add on the home screen. So you go to the widgets, to the widgets panel, you tap to add a widget, it will always place it at the top of the home screen. That way it will mess up your icons. The right way to do that, let's just remove this one. Let's go back to the widgets panel. The right way to do that is simply by tapping and holding here on the widgets panel. Just drag down, it will take you to your home screen. And now I have right here the widget in my finger and I can move it around here, place it anywhere I want. I don't have to automatically place it here. I can place it anywhere I want on the home screen, even move it to another page. That's the correct way to add a widget on the home screen of your device. The easiest way to share something like a website or maybe a photo or a screenshot with someone is just to ask Siri. Share this with test M. And as you can see, just like that, we have that ready to be sent on a message. I don't need to go to the messages app or tap the share button. Just ask Siri. That's the easiest way to do to actually share anything you want from your iOS device. Now, when it comes to sharing with Siri, you might not want to talk all the time to Siri. Maybe in your public, when you're in a public place, you don't want to actually talk out loud. What you can do, go to your settings, accessibility, and from here, make sure you find Siri and then just enable type to Siri. This will allow you to actually type to Siri instead of speaking to Siri. In my opinion, one of the most underrated features of iOS is automations. Now, what I like about it is that it allows us to actually customize your device the way you like it and of course the way it should be for you. So let's say you're someone that keeps orientation lock on all the time. A lot of people do this, but you want it to be off when you open a specific app. Go to create personal automation right here and find app. Here we have app. In this case, we will choose YouTube. So let's just find YouTube, click done and click next. Now tap on add action and search for orientation lock. So here we have set orientation lock. And then what we need to do is tap on toggle and choose turn and then choose right there off. Tap the next button, disable this. Don't ask, click done and you're good to go. So you can see we have orientation lock on now. What I can do is open YouTube and that will be turned off automatically as you can see it from the control center. Now, another cool thing I can do with automations is that I can set the volume percentage at any percentage I want based on the app that I open. Let's say you have an app that you just wanna have the volume turned off all the way down all the time when you open it. That's really easy to do. Tap the plus button, create personal automation, find app right here, choose the app. So let's just choose YouTube again. Choose YouTube right here, done. Click next, tap on add action and search for set volume. So here we have set volume, tap on it. And we have the percentage right there, tap on it and choose the slider. Tap next right here. So we have 0% there, tap don't ask, tap done and you're good to go. So. You can see we can have the volume almost all the way up. When I open YouTube, it will go down. You saw the volume hood right there. You can see right now it's all the way down as well. Now this is the last automation for this video. This is pretty cool as well. 
So let's say you have specific apps that you use maybe with your AirPods. So every time I connect my AirPods, I always listen to Spotify. What I wanna do is have Spotify open automatically when the AirPods connect. What I can do, tap on shortcuts, automation, create personal automation right here. And now what I need to do is go to Bluetooth. So here we have Bluetooth, choose the device. So we have the AirPods Pro right there, tap on done tap next, add action, and search for open app. So here we have open app, and just simply choose the app from here. So let's just do Spotify. So here we have Spotify, click next, done right there. At any time I connect to my AirPods, Spotify will be opened automatically. You probably know that you can shake to undo on your iPhone. So you basically shake your device, it will undo anything you want. Once you have done that, you can shake again and you can redo that undo. So if you just by accident delete something, you can redo it simply by shaking your device again. That's super cool and super useful to know. The spotlight search on iOS is way more useful than you might think. You can pretty much do anything on it, like use it as a calculator or a converter for anything you need. You don't actually need to open the calculator app if you just want to quickly calculate something. I can do it from here, so let's just try it out. So here I have 23 times 5 and it will give me the result. As easy as that. This is super cool. But what would you need this for? When you're on the home screen, you will have the calculator app there. Let's say you're on an app, you're doing something, you don't wanna go out of the app to go to the calculator app, you wanna do it right there. Well, you can open Spotlight Search within the app by doing a simple trick. So head on to the Settings app, and from here, make sure you go under Accessibility, and then go to Touch. Scroll all the way down, go to Back Tap, Double Tap or Triple Tap, whichever one you use, and then choose Spotlight. So when you're within an app, now you can use this to actually invoke the Spotlight search within an app. Let's say I wanna com basically convert something or just calculate something without leaving the current app, I can do it on the Spotlight search within the app using back tap iOS has this super cool feature called optimized battery charging. It will help the battery of your device have a longer lifespan and I really recommend it. But of course it will learn the pattern how you use your iPhone and sometimes if you just charge your iPhone at night, during the day you plug it into charge, it won't actually charge it over 80%. But if you really need that extra 20%, what I suggest you do Go to the battery section on the settings app, go to health right here and just turn it off. Turn it off like this and choose turn off until tomorrow. That way you can charge your iPhone to 100% but it will still be turned on automatically tomorrow. So you don't have to worry about the optimized battery charging to be turned on manually. You probably know that you can use the markup tool on iOS on PDFs, on photos, on screenshots, pretty much anywhere on iOS, on documents you can scan and stuff like that. You can even add signatures from the markup tool. So you tap the plus button and you will have here the option for signature. What's really cool about this is that you can have multiple signatures and you can add even more from here. So you can see this interface, I can remove one. If I have an old one, I can add another one right here tap on done and it will be saved and anytime I need it, I can just go ahead and tap on signatures and choose from any of the signatures that I have saved. This is a trick for the camera app. Whenever you open the camera app on iOS and you have a camera that of course offers the option for night mode, let's just make this a bit darker here. So whenever you have the option for dark mode, what you can do is actually tap on it and you will have this option here on auto what you can do is scroll this all the way here and turn the maximum setting of the night mode on your iPhone. So in this case, it's kind of bright here, so it will show max one second, but it will go up to 10 seconds. That way you will have a much, much brighter image with night mode. Moving on to Safari for the last couple of tricks. So whenever you wanna quickly open a new tab on Safari, all you need to do is just swipe from the right to the left like this and you will have a brand new tab. So anytime you need to do that, just like this and you're good to go. So again, open any tab you want. 
The last one on Safari, if you have a bunch of tabs open and you want to copy all the links of those tabs, what you need to do, tap on the tabs view right here, tap on tabs, and then tap and hold here where it says three tabs or how many tabs you have opened, and then just click on copy links. Now you have all the links completely copied to your clipboard, and you can save them anywhere you want. So that is it for this video guys, thank you guys for watching, I hope you find these tips and tricks helpful because I believe these are some of the most useful tips and tricks for your iPhone that you will probably use most of these on daily basis on your device. Again thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe for more and I will see you on the next video.